Good morning there everyone, it's Carol from the Crafty Emporium. So this week I've been concentrating on using up um, stamping up products from the old 2018 stroke 2019 catalogue and it, it's funny actually because a lady commented on a post yesterday about how she's hoarding her papers and this is about use it up. Now, I get the hoarding it papers bit because there are certain papers that I own that I'm like, I am not touching those because I love them too much and I can't get any more. Which is fine, you know? But the whole idea of us buying these papers is that we use them and create something beautiful with them. So, you know, I can't criticise her because I do exactly the same thing. But I know, because I've seen the catalogue, and I know that quite a few of you have seen the videos already of some of the new papers that are coming up for 2019-20. stroke Yeah, they're really, really nice. And I only have so much space. So, for me, using it up. Um, but I still have some of those papers that I hoard that I'm never going to touch, because they're just too pretty. These are too pretty as well. But I want to use them up. I want to use them in a constructive way. So this is going to be a two-parter video. There'll be one today and there'll be one tomorrow to finish off the week's worth of use it up videos. Okay, so I have here <laughs> a mass of bits of paper and card and leftover bits and yeah. So I'm going to make a mini journal, a ring bound journal, using up all of these. Now what I did was I went through some of my leftover bits and I tried to put together all the papers that kind of go together, if you know what I mean, colour wise. So this one was from Petal Promenade. These are from um, Floral Romance. And I did say that I was going to utilise the other vellum paper, which I didn't show you in the previous day's video. And that's it. Isn't it pretty? This is one of those that I'm like, I don't want to use. So I've actually got a sheet of this left over that will go in the... I'm not going to use you because you're too pretty pile and I'm kind of a bit loath to use this because I really like this paper as well but I'm sticking to my guns I'm going to use it and then I've got this one left over so I'm going to use this as well and in fact this is the one that I'm going to use as my basis for starting off my ring bound journal okay so let me put all the rest of these to one side I like these and so I thought it actually makes quite a nice size page if I use two of those and then of course I've got two of these over here as well so my thought was if I turn my rule around the right way if I in fact I want it turned that way because I want this side to be sort of the spine area because this is a little bit too thin here because I need to punch some holes into it so <clears throat> I've got more space here to have it as the spine area so I'm thinking I want to go from where the, the end of the, the printing finishes if I add Oh, let me just think. If I add half an inch onto there, do I think? Have I got enough room in there for holes? Let's have a look at three quarters of an inch. You see, this is the thought process of, that you go through. I'm not, I'm not going to be polished and go, this is this, that is that, bang, bang, bang. So I want you to see the thought process behind it as well. So if I go three quarters of an inch, which is that amount of space... <coughs> I've got enough room in there for a hole. Yeah. Let's try three quarters of an inch, Carol. So I have to G myself on. <laughs> All right. So if that's going to be the edge of my design or the edge of my page, in fact, I'm going to clip this off first. Let me clip that border off. 
so then I won't accidentally hack into it because I, I like the borders and I can use those. Okay, let's do three quarters of an inch -ish from there, which is round about there, I reckon. So I'm visually looking at the edge of that bit of leaf there because it protrudes on all three. I'm kind of lining it up with my eye. Now, let's see where this comes to over here. So that comes to just under five and a half inches. So if I make it around even, five and a half inches, then I know the width of all of my pages. See, logic in the madness. Five and one half inches. Now it doesn't matter if some of them are narrower. Okay, <gasps> we've made the cut. And then I'm going to chop that bit off there. So let's get an eyeball figure. So I'm going to chop that down there. So that comes to, let's have a look, ooh, seven inches. So if I make my pages, five and a half by seven remember that won't you because i'll need reminding in a bit okay <gasps> cut it five and a half by seven that should make a nice size yeah liking that okay page number one five and a half by seven wasn't it five and a half by seven okay let's get some more paper five and a half by seven now i want to use this up wisely i don't want to just hack it willy-nilly so where's my ruler again so what sort of measurement have we got there so that's nine five and a half won't go into that twice so that could be my seven inch high bit got oh look and i've got enough for two pages that way okay so seven inches chop off the excess that'll come in handy for something and then two lots of five and a half and that will come in handy for something okay I've got three pages separate them okay come on Carol some more let's have some more okay let's have a look at this one so this piece is nine inches again I can't get the five and a half in there twice look at it that way but I can get the five and a half in there twice. So again, I'm going to spin that and I'm going to cut that to seven inches. I'm being ruthless. Ooh, I love you, paper. No, oh, come on, be a grown up. Five and a half inches. And another one, five and a half inches. Okay, two more pages. Now then, how many pages do you cut? Ah, well, that will all depend on the rings that you use. Because although we can put quite a few on these rings, you don't want it absolutely busting that you then are crushing the papers as they're working their way around the rings as you're flicking the pages open. So every so often, once we've punched our holes in, I'm gonna put these rings in and just check I haven't got too many. Now, whilst it's easy to watch me cut up these papers, there's something else that I want to show you in a sec. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so I can get the two out of the width that way, and I can get my seven inch out of that way. So let's do this one. Because I don't want to be boring and just have purely flat pages. I want some other things in there too. Five and one half. And 
five and one half. Okay, if we do that one. Oh, mind you, I had another idea for that one, didn't I? I'm going to hold on to that one because I've got an idea for that one. Um, now, what I did here was, let me move that out of the way. So I folded a piece of um, the 12 by 12 DSP paper and I folded it into three. Okay, so I folded a piece up, a piece down and made the two so that they overlapped. Where they overlapped, I glued them down. So it now forms, let me open it up, now forms a sleeve. Hello, hello down there. I never did grow up. Right, so I just glued them down. Now I'm going to cut them off. Although I folded them in half, I can't have folded in half pieces in my little journal. So I'm going to glue this bottom bit up here so that that's now closed and then I'll put my holes in and then I'll have a little mini pocket there. I could also do it that way so that I glue that bottom bit, I put my holes in here and then I've got a mini pocket that way around as well. So because I've got the two, I'm going to have one one way and one the other way. So this one needs to make sure that it doesn't extend beyond the edge of my page. So I'm actually going to trim some off this piece because when I put things inside of this pocket, they're going to protrude slightly and I don't want them to protrude beyond the edge of my page so I'm just going to trim this one down so my page width was five and a half inches so I'm going to trim this down to five. Oh good five. Anyone who's from England and as old as me will know what I just said. <laughs> Anyone else probably won't have a clue. Okay, so that's another one, and that's another one, that, and that one's going to go that way. Okay, let's cut into some of this vellum, because it's always lovely to have some vellum in between. Now, again, look, I've got this one folded, so I just want to check. Yeah, so that's wide enough. So I'm just going to trim this folded bit off. So now I've got two separate pieces there. And vellum's lovely in a journal because it's it's just transparent enough that you can sort of get the idea that there's something behind there. Okay, I'm going to cut into my lovely pretty vellum. So let's do uh, seven inches deep. And then I can get two pieces out of that. I did it. I cut it. Oh, I didn't cut it very well. Come on, Carol. Okay, and then I'm going to spin it again. And do five and a half. Oh, in fact, that one could go in on its own as well. Mm, I include that one. Um, what was I doing? Five and a half. I forgot which way round. No, that's it. I want it that way. Uh, five and a half. Okay, and now I've got two of them. Now I need a front cover. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use I'm going to use, or maybe I could have one for the front and one for the back. Yeah, they don't have to be the same, do they? Right, let's see how wide this is. Five and a half. Look at that, look perfect. Trim that bit off. Five, seven. So that can be my front. And this one can be my back. So that one was Mossy Meadow 
and this one is pear pizzazz. And the nice thing as well about the ring bound journals is I can keep adding to it. So let's have a look at what we've got so far. So I've got a front and a back cover. Okay. And then I've got these as some of my pages. So I'm going to put the vellum ones to one side for one minute and I'll put them in as and when because I want them to complement the papers that I'm going to have on the background and then that's a specialist one and then those pocket ones are specialist ones so if I sort these cut out pages first into a semblance of order that I really like so I'm going to start off with one of the ones that I really like and I think it looks lovely against the dark green and I think it needs to be that way around because to me when I look at it like that, that cabbage is upside down. So I'm going to put it in that way around. And then I'm going to have that one. Then I'm going to put that one in. Then that one, which leads me to, and with them being double sided papers as well, of course you're covered on both sides. Then I'm going to have that one. Then that one, because that looks nice against this grey floorboard bit. And then that one. In fact, I'm going to have that that way. And like that. Okay. And then back cover. Now then, I need to insert these specialist bits. So this is where I'm going to put these in now. So if I flick through it as though I'm looking at a journal completed one Could I put that in there maybe yeah like that and then I don't want one in every other page though well actually would that look nice on there hmm maybe it gets a little bit lost but that gets lost on there might have to have a little rethink on this one. Oh, what would it look like there? Now that looks quite pretty. Yep, so I like that in there. Okay, so I want one more of these vellum pieces in. Let's have a look. Oh, that would look pretty on the, with the pinky background. Oh, yeah, that works well. Okay, happy with that there. Okay, start again. Okay, because so I want to put these in. Now I'm going to leave that for now because I might come up with something for that. So I've got this single one and these two pocket pieces. Now before I put those pocket pieces in, I'm just going to glue up those bottoms. So I said that one was going to go that way, didn't I? <coughs> oh, I know what I could use that peach you want for that can wait till the next video <laughs> I have a plan you see this is it once you get started you start to come up with all sorts of different ideas little things just pop into your head and you oh I could do that okay so that's that bottom one glued up so I know that I want that one that way in and this one was going to go that way so I want this end gluing up not that it matters which end, I suppose, really. Okay, so let's just put a little bit of glue down there. Yup. Stay. And then that one's going to go in that way. Okay, let's go through again. So... Because it wouldn't do to have everything all samey-same. So let's have a few extra different little bits in. See, it's all a thinking process now. So what about if I have that one in there? Hmm, no, I like, I like that. Ooh. 
would that get lost on there? I like that there though. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there. Maybe that one could go at the back and maybe I could put another sheet of paper in there to just differentiate that bit. Okay, liking all that so far. So what I'm now wanting is I want a fold out page. So I'm going to get this piece of paper. Now we said, what was it? Five and a half by seven. Okay, so I want the seven inch height. Because I'd like them all the same height. Seven inches. And then I'm going to be a rebel. Okay, so that's my seven inches. Now then, I'd like a foldy out piece. <laughs> so that's my foldy out piece symbol with my hand. <laughs> so I know it's five and a half inches wide. So if I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. Oh, bone folder, Carol. Bear with, bear with me. That's my chair, me rolling about on my chair. Okay, so I know it's five and a half inches. So I'm just going to put my bone folder in there and just carefully fold that. Okay, so now that's going to fold over there. And then I want to cut that down to about here because there's something fancy that I want to do with the piece of my vellum. So do I don't want it there. Yeah, because if I add that bit onto there. Right, I'm going to go to the halfway point. So five and a half. So if I do it, I'll tell you what, let's forget about measuring. Let's just cut it there. Sometimes you just don't need to measure stuff. Life's too short. Okay, put that up. Cut that there. Whoop. There we go. So that piece is now going to fold in. And that could actually go at the back, couldn't it? Where I said I could add an extra page. Okay. In fact, we're going to have it go in that way. So when I turn that page over, it flips out like that. <gasps> Liking it. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to corner round all of my pages. Okay. So again, I'm going to flip it open. I'm going to get my corner rounder out and I'm going to corner round all the pages. Now, the reason for doing that is that sometimes when you've got a square corner like this, they can get a little bit jagged and messy because they catch because of it being a sharp point if it's rounded then you're less likely to catch it and ruin the corner so if they're rounded it just makes life a little bit easier plus the fact it gives it that slightly more professional finish so i would then go through and go and corner round all of these ends not these ends but these ends all right now i'm not going to do them all because i think the last thing you want to do is to spend your precious time watching me corner around all of these pieces. Boring! So I'm not going to do that and of course vellum doesn't. So if you find that you have a paper of any kind and it doesn't punch very well, if you stick another piece of paper underneath it and line it up against those corners, it fools the puncher, says she with her fingers crossed, into thinking, oh, there's no vellum there. I can corner around that. There you go. See, look, it's corner rounded it because I fooled it into thinking that that's what it was doing. Okay, so I'm going to do the bottom one whilst we're here. So, any papers that you ever find don't punch properly, 
put a piece of paper or a piece of card underneath because it just likes that extra thickness all right so i'm going to break it off here what i'd like you to go and do is go and gather all your papers together sort them out into groups so that you've got sort of like i've got here they're all grouped into colors so that they all match and blend work out what size pages you want because you don't have to do them to the same size as me sort cut them all out sort them into a semblance of order that you like sort out a piece of card for the front and for the back and corner around all your pages and i'll meet you back here in the next video see you in a bit bye for now